We keep talking about operators in quantum mechanics, but what's this business with operators? What are they? So let's actually start with classical physics. And in classical physics, uh, we describe a particle by its position. Let's just work in one dimension, say x of t. And so uh, in particular, if you were Newton, so here's Newton, a question you might ask is, what is the momentum of the particle at some time t? And the way you might answer this, if you were Newton, is you would calculate the momentum as m times the time derivative of the position x of t. Uh, at this point, we could write m d by dt as an operator, in quotes. Uh, and the thing about an operator here is that it doesn't make much sense by itself. It only makes sense uh, when you operate it on something. And in particular here, you have to operate our momentum operator on the position x of t, and then you just get m d by dt x of t. There are a number of other operators in classical physics that we might work with. Uh, in particular, one that's common is the del operator, which is, uh, if I were to write it in kind of this operator form, is the partial derivative in the x, y, and z direction written as a vector. But again, this doesn't really make sense by itself. It only makes sense when it operates on something, and in this case, when it operates on a field. So as an example, if you take the gradient of something like v of x, y, and z, say the gradient of a potential, or if you take the divergence of a vector field, uh, say that could be the electric field, uh, and so on. It only makes sense when I do operating on fields. OK, so now let's talk about operators in quantum physics. So now, when we describe a particle, we describe it by a wave function, capital Psi, of x and t. So if you were Schrodinger, OK, so this is Schrodinger, you might ask, what is the expectation value for the momentum? That would be a quantum way of asking a similar question. Uh, he needs some eyes here. There we go. And the way we might answer this is we would use the momentum operator, p hat, which as we've seen is h bar over i partial partial x. But again, this operator only makes sense when it operates on something. And in this case, it has to operate on a wave function for it to make sense. Uh, so in particular, you could take p hat times capital Psi, uh, and then you get h bar over i partial Psi partial x. Uh, or when you actually talk about observables, you would take the expectation value of p, in which you sandwich it between Psi star and Psi. Uh, and so then you have h bar over i partial partial x Psi. OK, so let's talk about some other operators that you might encounter in quantum mechanics. One we've already seen, uh, you would call it position operator, x hat. We put a little hat on things for quantum operators, and that's just x. Um, another operator you could use is the Hamiltonian operator, h hat, which is minus h bar squared over 2m, partial, partial x squared, plus v of x. Uh, more generally, you could have an operator q hat of x hat and p hat. Uh, so some combination of position and momentum. Let's talk a little bit about eigenfunctions in quantum mechanics. Um, so there are some functions in quantum mechanics that are special. Well, they're extra special. Because if you hit them with an operator, then you get the same wave function back again times some number. So q hat times psi is equal to q times psi. 
Uh, we call this an eigenvalue equation uh, because it looks very similar to uh, eigenvalue equations in um, matrix math. We call capital Psi the eigenfunction of Q with eigenvalue little q, which is why we put a little subscript little q there. Um, but it's not always the case that a wave function is going to be an eigenfunction of an operator. So for example, let's take our wave function to be a sine of pi x over l. Uh, and then this is going to be in our box, our particle in a box, where the potential is zero in a certain region. The Hamiltonian operator h hat times psi gives minus h bar squared over 2m partial partial x squared times a times sine of pi over l x. Okay, so we need to take those derivatives. We take those derivatives and out front we get h bar squared pi squared over 2m l squared times a sine of pi x over l again. So notice that this is our original wave function back again times some number here. And that number is the eigenvalue associated with our wave function. So we say capital Psi here is an eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian operator h hat with an eigenvalue h bar squared pi squared over 2m l squared. Is this an eigenfunction of the momentum operator? We can take p hat times Psi, which is minus h bar over i, uh, and then d by dx, which brings out pi over l times a cosine of pi x over l. So notice that this is not just some um, number times the original wave function back again, because we have a cosine instead of a sine. So we would say capital Psi in this case is not an eigenfunction of the momentum operator, even though it's an eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian. 